on to the K7 block, and K7 is a modified block, so you'll have to get out the book. And here it is. They basically just divided this into four pieces. This is a giant um, clover that's then assembled and then applicate onto a four and a half inch square. So there's not much laying out or explanation to this block. I've got my pieces over here, and they were assembled. So here's my pieces for this, and for basting, I'm going to glue baste these straight edges, and then I'm going to use my gathering stitch on this heart shape, which is a little confusing, but I'm going to treat this as one, and then treat this as one. There's going to be a cut. I'm going to make a cut till about here. I'm going to leave some space so they don't cut all the way down to the paper. You need some kind of a seam allowance, but you also need to um, slice this, and then I'll be able to use my gathering stitch to hug this curve and then hug this curve on each one of these. So basting is gonna take a little while on this just because of the curve. Once I got basting done, I'm just gonna assemble these into a, a clover shape and then center this on here. On my block prep, I've got this as an up and down because I have a directional background here. So I wanted to make sure that I had that the same, although it doesn't matter because this is the only piece of this fabric in this block. So let's get started with the basting on the K7 quarters. So I've got all my straight edges basted and I've got two of the four of the um, gathering stitches done. So what, you've, what I've done here is I've made a slit to about here so that it stops. And then what happens is when you baste it with the gathering stitch it doesn't go all the way down, but it, it holds enough fabric there so that it will maintain the integrity of that crevice. So when I go, and, and it's probably not as sharp as it is without the fabric, but that's okay because you get the idea as long as it's a consistent look. So I've got two of the four of these done. I'm going to finish the other two, and then I'm going to attach these to each other, and then I can position them on here and, and applique. Now that I've got all four of these gathering stitched on the outside, now I'm going to assemble them. I've got these two taped and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to line up this line and these may not be perfect here because of how I pulled it but I can adjust that as I go to pull this tighter here because it's just loose. That way I can have an even seam right here. So I will get these four pieces connected. So here's the assembled K7 center and now we go to the four and a half inch block. And What I've done is I've labeled this with some marks so that I can place this accurately. I found the center of each one of these sides and drew a line. You don't need to draw it all the way in because it's going to be very close to the edge. And I'm going to line these up with these intersections here. So these are going to be lined up with these seams. And then I did corner to corner, also not all the way through. And these are going to line up with these indentations. So you've got eight points to place this correctly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple it down in four different spots so I make sure that it stays there so I can accurately applique it down. So I've got my clover appliqued to my background. Now I've got to erase these. I've used pencil here. I don't use friction pen because it doesn't really go away. If you use it on dark fabric it leaves a white mark. So on light fabrics I use a light pencil line and on dark fabrics, I use a light white pencil line from the white mechanical pencils. I'm going to remove my staples from the back carefully so it doesn't snag my fabric. And then I'm going to remove my gathering stitches by snipping the knots off and pulling it through. Now all my basting is out, my staples are out, and I have a completed K7 block.